We've covered now most of the, the big stuff when it comes to, to systems. Uh, and now you've got all these systems, but notice something that we haven't uh, even mentioned once, and that's numbers. Uh, so we say we have to break everything down to numbers, but we've just been talking about attributes, not the numbers of those attributes. So that's where data comes in, and this is the key difference between uh, data and systems. Data is what populates and runs the systems. Systems cover all instances, so all cows have the same system. All cows have milk production. All cows eat grass at some volume. All cows have some stamina. And then our data determines which cows are better at milk production, have more stamina, eat more grass. So that's the difference between systems and data. And to break it out a little bit further, we have some things that uh, a systems designer will do versus what a data designer will do. A systems designer will determine characters have hit points, strength, dexterity, weapons, and armor, uh, like we've already discussed. The data designer will come back in then and say, okay, we got those things. Now there's a character named Ichabod, and he's going to have 98 hit points, 14 st strength, 23 dexterity, sword with his own attributes and numbers, and armor with its own attributes and numbers, which uh, we'll get into a little bit later. But uh, the point being, uh, the systems designer generally does not deal with the number. It deal, he deals with the interactions. The data designer is the guy that deals with the individual numbers. So now we've discussed how to build good systems, how to distill life down into uh, attributes, and then what to hand off to a data designer. And very often the systems designer is the data designer especially on smaller games. So now we've handed the systems off to a data designer and we need to make good data. So there's some also some good rules for making good data that we need to observe uh, when creating games. And again, games are different and we have different purposes. Three rules that kind of govern uh, the making of your numbers when we actually get to making numbers uh, is smaller numbers are easier for players to comprehend. One is bigger than two. That's really easy to comprehend. The little children can comprehend that. Large numbers are more accurate. Uh, if I only had one and two strength, it would be hard to categorize 30 or 40 different kinds of characters uh, that are either one or two strength. That's not much granularity. Uh, so larger numbers, if I said one to 100, now I can categorize a lot of different characters with a lot of different granularity. Uh, a 97 is better than a, a, a 95, right? A 50 is twice as good as a 25, but only a little bit worse than a, a 56, right? So that's a lot more granularity. Uh, so larger numbers are more accurate. Fractions and de decimals are confusing to players, but not computers. Uh, you may be able to think of a, a, an instance, but it is a rarity that uh, you're, you're playing a video game and you get a, uh, you know, you, you defeat a boss or a character and you get some experience, and it says, you have gained 23.825 experience. We don't do that because humans don't like that. Uh, and that's really the bottom line to that. I mean, it's, it's completely valid mathematically and numerically, but humans don't like it. Remember, we're concerned with the emotional interaction of humans with numbers, not just the numbers themselves. Uh, this is a very easy trap for young designers, myself included, fell into this of wanting to get very complicated systems with very high precision, and all of my players hated them because they were intimidating. Uh, so it's the player's perception and feeling of your numbers trumps the actual accuracy and beauty of your elegant system. And for an example, we have uh, three numbers. Number A is 94% of attribute B. Attribute A is 94% of attribute B in each one of these cases. But you can see uh, here in the first column, those are confusing, barfy, awful numbers that no one, most regular common players would not want to see. And I can quantify this because I put it to the test when we've left debug stuff in video games I've made. We've had playtesters see stuff like this where we don't round off and they're, they're done. They just stop. Uh, next on the list, 1617. I get it. That's easy. You know, third grader could totally understand this. 17 is a little bit better than 16. Move up a digit. Uh, so I get a little bit more accuracy. Maybe I need something in between. So I move up a digit. 160, because I don't want fractions. 160, 170. Yeah, it makes sense. 170 is bigger than 160. Yeah, yeah, I get that. 
that's starting to get a, a big number. 165 better than 160? Yeah, I get it. But uh, you, what does that really mean? How much better is that? Slightly? I don't know. Uh, but this one, it's not so bad. And then we move up to our final increment. And this is silliness. Uh, yeah, I, I, I get 4879 is bigger than 4592 by, by, by how? Unless you showed me 94 Ninety-four percent. I don't. I only. That's. I would think it was bigger. Just. I don't know. It's playing mental tricks with me again. And this goes back to psychology. And this is something that is shown. Now you may say, "Wait a minute. Uh, Peggle has huge numbers, enormous numbers that go across the screen. This fighting game I played gave me a billion. Uh, that made sense. Yeah, that's a trick. Uh, so that's called digit inflation. And that's take this number or this number because these are the same." and just keep adding digits. So it's still the same granularity, but they're just zeros. And this is a psychological trick because humans most associate numbers with money growing up and more digits on money equal good thing. So they're tricked into thinking more digits on points equal good thing, even though points only exist relative to each other in a game space. So if this was 16 million and this was 17 million, it's the same thing.